Hello, and welcome back to Roslyn. This is episode 26. Thanks for joining me here. Um, if you've watched the last two episodes, episodes 24 and 25, you might not be surprised to find out this is another episode focused on our train station here. So we can see we got a passenger train leaving town um, on its way out here, and we're going to be focused on how to get people from all across the city to the train station so they can go on a trip somewhere else if they're uh, leaving town after coming in on tourism they can get back to wherever they need to be or when they're coming into town as a tourist or on business or anything if they come in through the train station they can get anywhere in the city they need to be so the way we're going to focus on doing that is with transit so here we are at the train station um, where you can see we've detailed in all this farmers market stuff and we're going to start looking at bus lines uh, so bus lines uh, are really the foundation of our transit network right now as you can see um, so let's go ahead and look at like we've got some stops right here right we want to look at how can we get stops in places that make sense for the train station here so I want to move those a block closer uh, but now they're a little too close to these, so I think it'd actually be nice to have these stops over here, because it kind of creates two stops within walking distance of the train station there. Um, so then we want to look at the line here. So that's middle, we just move those stops around on. We can see we've got a couple of buses that are quite full. Uh, we've got a couple of stops that uh, have significant wait times. Um, but if we watch here, this bus actually clears the stop, so it's really not in that bad of shape. As a point of comparison, let's look at a place like Valley View, where all of these stops are in pretty good shape, so are the buses. Um, so then I also want to look at some of these bus lines that come up to Worker Square right now, and see if I can find a way to bring them over to the train station now. Um, so this one right here, Dusty Road, that kind of goes down uh, the, the edge of the yards there and then down towards Baymouth Beach. Um, currently comes right up there to Worker Square. Uh, and I just want to bring it into the train station. I think it just makes sense. Not that that's a far walk from there, but um, we're going to go ahead and bring a stop right here. And then I want to be wary of traffic patterns as I'm moving bus stops around, especially if we're anticipating an increase in service on these lines. Um, there's good reason to be cognizant of where uh, uh, buses are going to be routing now to complete these routes um, and thinking about how we can manage traffic because traffic's not in bad shape right now, but it's just something to keep an eye on. So I'm also bringing that line up there. I believe that is the Sandy Street line um, that you can see heads straight out from here, uh, right down through the middle of the Baymouth Beach neighborhood, straight to the beach. Um, although obviously not as major of a transit corridor as uh, uh, the um, tram line that runs down there to the library, but uh, good to have all the same. Um, I actually really like having a stop there for the sake of uh, the walkway. Um, so I'm just going to be toying around with these stops a fair bit, I think. And the other thing I really might want to do and consider is if it makes sense to bring them all the way to the farmer's market, potentially even. Um, I think that that might be... Uh, uh, a good place to bring them so if I bring one like right around here um, and really just like right outside the train station so it's gonna be doing sort of an interesting loop there now if I bring this down a block I think that makes more sense um, while well, this one if I bring it over here okay I'll be honest with you, I'm recording this audio after the fact, and I'm a little frustrated with some of the decisions I'm making with these bus lines, so we'll see how permanent they are. You might catch me in a couple of episodes reworking a lot of this, but that's going to be making sense because I'm going to continue to add transit in future episodes, especially through this area down here as the city continues to expand. But yeah, so I think I do want to bring these bus lines all the way over to the farmer's market. I think that's a good plan. Um, 
go ahead and keep a stop right there on Factory Street. Good turn, good drop off. I want to think about serving different uses with all of these bus lines, being people being able to get to commercial, to other transit hubs, um, even to some office space if we can. So I just want to check some other bus lines on the other side of the station here now, make sure their stops are in a good spot for service in the train station. And I think this line is actually, I believe this is Valley View again. It looks like it's in really good shape, to be honest with you. Um, I do want to be sensitive to how many bus stops I've added now on this side and just make sure there's not going to be a stop stoppage of all those buses working the same stop. So I may even spread them out. or just move them all down to a much worse spot. So I'm gonna regret that and probably undo it later, hopefully. Because um, all those buses are just gonna be turning right there and it's gonna stop any other traffic from turning right. But honestly, Grove and Valley, this area right here, I think is due to be turned into connectors with two-way streets on either side and honestly, maybe even a tram line. Um, I think this is another major backbone of the city here. But I also want to come look at, so here's a case of a really bad bus loop uh, up here at the end of this. Um, for some reason, the bus wants to do a complete circle there. So I'm going to see if I can just put it on a different spot. So that will help somewhat. There is a stop down at the other end of that block, though. That's a factor here. So that's why the bus wants to go all the way down there. So if I make this turn around different, And then, or if I bring it here, okay, that makes it a little simpler. And then what if we bring this, hmm. Sometimes you just gotta get a little creative with where you put stuff, I'll be honest with you. Okay, if we put a stop there, that'll keep it running on one route. Okay, I like that. I like giving the bus the right turn priority there. Go ahead and add a stop right there. And then probably bring one right here. So this is just trying to factor this line that's gonna feed into that line that's gonna feed into the train station right now. So we want everything to be connected. Um, so let's go ahead and check in on Dusty Road here. We've actually got some full buses, some stops with some good traffic. So I think that's doing what we want it to do for the most part, and that's good news. Not crazy about the traffic pattern though, to be totally honest. This is kind of nuts. Let's see how I like this nice straight line through here, right? Let's go ahead and check on this, see, doing okay. Uh, six buses, it's clear at its stops, good load size. Uh, one is still riding almost empty, um, so that seems pretty well balanced right now. You know, the car trip save number is kind of low. So we're just checking in right here, taking a look and seeing how we're doing. Obviously, we've got a very busy bus stop right there, um, but traffic's not bad. Um, so that's good to see. There's not a backup here. There's not a bunch of buses stopped waiting around the corner. That said, I may still, you know, want to reevaluate here. And like I said earlier, make this swap. So this is actually later in the footage. Um, I spent time detailing and I'll show you a little bit of that at the end of this video. But one of the things about uh, transit fixing is you just have to give it time. Um, having plans to do some detailing or doing it around other projects, uh, as is often the case in City Skylines, gives things a chance to sort of settle in and reach a new status quo when you're making significant changes, because you're not going to see that stuff happen overnight. There's a number of factors that are going to delay the effect of any changes you make. Um, and yeah, so... Let's check in on the actual numbers on the lines that we've been messing with here. So here's Valley View, and wow, 65 people waiting right here, um, just just uh, just east of Factory Street to, to head down towards City Hall there. 
and another 55 at that stop across the street. So obviously we want to bump the numbers up here. We'll get that up to eight. But as you can see, like it's going to take time for buses to get here. They're coming in from the depot, which you can just see that light blue thing sticking out on the right side of the screen there. Um, so our buses are showing up, but then they're going to be backed up and sort of bunched together these new buses that were just added to the line initially it's going to take them some time to spread out this is what i'm talking about with with taking time for transit to take effect um, so sometimes what i like to do here is watch the bus get into a horrible accident on factory street but don't worry there are no automobile accidents in city skylines uh, so it's the perfect game for car culture um, but I, you can just follow your bus along here and see like, okay, do these stops actually make sense? Like get in down low here and see like, yeah, I'd wanna come right here to Valley View Square. I can maybe pick up the Park Street bus right here. Um, makes a nice little loop. You know, all of these offices are right here if you work along the train tracks, unfortunate, but uh, great transit access. Um, and so we're just making sure we're seeing now like okay these buses are actually picking a fair bit of people up at the end of this line consistently so are they actually ever going to be able to clear those stops that are just getting increasingly overloaded and it's not looking like it to me to be honest with you I think what needs to happen here sooner rather than later is Valley and Grove, Grove and Valley, this area right here that is between Valley View Street and Grove Street um, needs to get updated with tram lines at the very least. Uh, I think for sure some kind of higher capacity transit serving this specific area is a must have, um, especially as it becomes like a crucial intersection now with the train station and the factory street tram and so many other transit lines that are developing here in the city. So let's bump back over to Dusty Road here, uh, further to the, um, so we're gonna check on the stop and we're gonna see, it's really not that much traffic at this, not how much high demand for the Dusty Road stop right here, which makes some sense because it doesn't really go anywhere. Um, there's a lot of stops here. Uh, I mean, the bus loads are fine, but so we'll just take a look at this um, and see, you know, does it make sense to move a stop somewhere else um, in a way that can maybe increase efficiency? Because if you have stops that are close together on a line that's not really getting heavy traffic, it's good to look at ways to merge them because if you can cut down on bus stops, you make the line more efficient. Um, which everybody loves and actually does have implications for like land value mechanics in the game. Um, so looking at this one here, I move that stop back a little bit and then I want to take a look and see that one's actually getting good traffic at the pickup there, which makes sense. But maybe we can move the drop off. Maybe we can move them both down here one. So it's still not too far for the folks up there. And then bring these down here. And see we're seeing some level ups now and that's we'll see if they still are happy when they don't have two bus stops within i mean they still have two bus stops within walking distance to be honest and actually you can even pull that one out entirely because the destination there is really the beach um, and that's still actually quite a popular stop okay it's getting big pickup at least which makes some sense no, not uh, not like wild about the traffic pattern through here right now. I'll say that again. I think it's going to make sense at some point here between Worker Square and the train station maybe or uh, by the farm to create a better transit hub um, to service local traffic off the train station. That's what we're trying to do this episode. That's why, you know, we're getting the chance to name some bus lines that have been here for a while and haven't had names. So this is Sandy Street now because uh, that is the, the line on Sandy Street. Um, and of course, we want to actually maintain our naming convention, so we want it to be Line 14 Sandy Street. Uh, and I the reason I actually keep the numbers and use them at the front is because it just becomes a much easier system to keep track of all your bus lines, especially when you get up into like dozens of them, um, when you can sort by name and there's a numeric code like that. Um, so just a pro tip from an elite transit gamer. 
Um, so again, looking at the bus line here, checking out these stops, we've got some that are really close together down by the beach, which makes sense. You want the Sandy Street bus to have a lot of stops by the beach, but how many is too many? Um, so we can take a look at this. These are pretty close together. Um, you know, don't know if we need a lot of these stops that have zeros, if they're not good drop-off stops, it's a good chance to reevaluate if there's really there. Because you can really think when you have a sort of, you know, hub and spokes transit system you're building around a major feature like a train station, you can think like, okay, all of these bus lines are going to have pickups into downtown and drop-offs from downtown, right? Because they're servicing these residential areas that are away from the sort of urban core we've developed here. Um, oh, that looks popular. Um, so you can't always just look at a bus stop and say, oh, it's got a zero on it. It must not be doing any good because it might actually be an essential drop-off stop that adds a ton of value to that line. Um, and I think, you know, in the future, a full transit audit episode might be warranted. Um, so here I'm just like trying to look for opportunities to move stops around a little bit. So I'm going to bring this drop-off stop down another, because um, that's what that is. That's what I'm talking about. That's coming away from downtown into this residential neighborhood. Go ahead and bring these stops up here, and then we can get rid of these. And that's gonna, they're going to say they're unhappy about that, but it's going to make this bus front line run better. And I don't know if it'll actually improve value here, but it will uh, cut down on the amount of time it takes a bus to complete the loop. And... Um, that improves the efficiency. So we're seeing some good numbers here, actually. Let's see what this stop is. Yeah, okay, everybody here in the Baymouth Beach area, well, there's a lot of apartment buildings right there, so that makes a lot of sense. Um, and let's see, I've actually got these buses that are upgraded. Let's see if one of them makes sense. You know, to maintain a sense of realism, it'd be nice to have buses that, uh, uh, can make the turns. Um, and so jumping back into what I was saying about naming streets earlier, something you see a lot of cities do is they will name bus lines odds and evens by whether they go north, south, or east, west, um, and whether uh, they go um, uh, uh, and then and then you see like numeric coding systems from a certain origin point. So that's what I'm kind of trying to do here um, is rename bus lines to give them an obvious directionality and uh, to give them a geography within the city sort of emanating from the Brown Street area and the daughters where they would make sense to start from you know, what right now is the top of the screen there, coming down in descending order with the odd numbers, one, two, one, three, five, seven, etc. And then we can go uh, with these other lines that come from top to bottom of the screen instead of across the screen. Those will be our even numbers. So like here, I'm going to rename Dusty Road number 10. Um, there's going to be some oddities, I'll be honest with you. Um, unless your city is an absolute perfect grid, this kind of system, you're going to have to make exceptions and there's going to be some special numbers. The benefits of this is, I think it adds a real sense of realism to the game because cities do this for a reason. It's so that even if you don't know the bus system super well, you can sort of at least figure out where you are, uh, if that makes sense. Because if you know, like, okay, I need to go... Uh, south from where I am, okay, then I need a, a, an odd number bus, for example. Um, you know, uh, and it can really help to create a sense of space and distance as well. If you know, like, uh, where I'm going, I can get to on the number two bus, but I have to take the number seven to get there. Um, you know, it could create a real sense of geography to the city and help people understand their environment more, which I think is a really nice thing uh, as an urban resident is to have the systems like public transit be um, easy to understand. Um, if you've ever lived in a new city where you've been trying to figure out the buses or the trains or any kind of public transit system, it can be really daunting. 
uh, because a lot of the times, you know, New York I'll use as a classic example. Um, if you just walk into a New York subway stop and, and you don't know that the trains are numbered and lettered and um, have any idea sort of where they go, it can be very ambiguous um, as a new resident or as a tourist. But once you've lived there for a while and you get familiar with the trains you use on a regular basis, you start to unlock like a knowledge of the system. New York is a great example to me because you compare it to a place like Chicago where you've got a train system that you look at the map and you could sort of instantly recognize what's happening. There's a central hub in the loop downtown um, and a bunch of sort of offshoots of that creating a, a hub and spokes effect. Uh, New York is a much more complicated system, which I think contributes to the confusion. Um, and I think part of that is because, if, if I remember right, it's basically a bunch of old private train systems that were bought up and consolidated. So there's a lot of inefficiencies in the system relative to a really simplistic, color-coded design like Chicago's. Um, part of that necessary that you know complexity necessarily arises from how much more complex New York is and how much more the people there rely on transit. Um, really is the foremost non-car city in the U.S., and that's not saying much. Uh, so, I'm just striving here to recreate that sense of realism um, by trying to make these lines feel instantly recognizable. And I'll even extend that to the trams here. Um, so you'll, you'll have these major streets now, like Factory Street and Roslyn Street, that will be associated with a specific number of line, as opposed to just a line number for their transit type. So we'll keep the 03 line on Factory Street, because that was the bus line initially, even though much of it's been upgraded to tram now. We'll make Roslyn, I think that was 05 all the way across, because um, really Park, Factory, and Roslyn our 135 there are going to be essential and then that kind of frees up the odd numbers above that to use for our odd little streets that might cut diagonally or just uh you know as we're adding more in here to to what's the left of the screen right now um, we'll want the opportunity to still name them within the numeric system so i'm just going to extend our number system out here to some of these lines that are in these very sort of rudimentary improvised neighborhoods that uh, I laid out just to try to boost the population up enough to unlock some things. Um, so hopefully we will have the opportunity to do a lot more detailing and customization out here eventually. For now, uh, these help us get to some of the things that I wanted to be able to play with. Uh, but again, just extending this numerical system out here. So we'll make this number 20. That is sort of out here on the edge by what I'm calling Crestville by um, the oil industry I put together. And so then this is right now bus line 17. And it's actually just Factory Street again. <laughs> Um, so maybe there's a chance to consolidate there. Or maybe that's an issue for a more com comprehensive transit audit. I'm not sure what the play is here right now. So I'll go ahead and call this the 13 line on Factory Street for now, just to denote that it is not the same line as 03. I don't want to get rid of this completely, but it doesn't really need to be um, totally laid out just yet. So and we'll go ahead and add some, some of the other bus types to these lines that are far flung out here and see kind of how they look. And of course, we want to check our turnarounds, check our traffic patterns even on these very early bus lines. I also want to look for opportunities to fill in the connections because, you know, it might not be the most realistic to have bus lines serving these areas that are so full of empty space already. 
but it is going to show us the layout for transit demand and you know i'm leaving space in here because i want to be able to come through and add bigger features later without having to delete a ton ton of stuff so i'm gonna go ahead and throw a line in here And just have one right there for now again looking to maximize efficiency on these for the time being um, just trying to connect up the stuff that is here that will need to be reevaluated as the build continues to fill in of course and then of course we want to bring Park, Star Park Street line out here as well to connect up to that again like ultimately this is really all in service of the train station in a lot of ways. Um, the point being to connect up all these far flung areas of the city uh, to our train station, just as we have um, everything else. So go ahead and bring this. We'll have stops right there. And then we want to grab this and we can really bring it. Maybe we'll have a stop right here. Or... Yeah, I guess this makes some sense here. And then I'm gonna grab this again and we just wanna bring it out here. Um, and then we can sort of make sure we're gonna get the traffic pattern we want by dropping that right there. Cause the pickup on that will be really essential, honestly. And just looking to see if there's any other spots here that this would be okay, that I'd be happy with. And I think that's the one right there. Great. So this line here now should be extended up, I believe. And really, again, just the first draft of our transit network for the entire city here. Because this is going to show us where some hub, major hubs are going to sort of form organically based on how I've laid things out. And that can really help inform how we plan around these areas uh, later on in the game. Um, because once we get these bus lines down and we can sort of see the demand for transit to and from these different hotspots, uh, that can really help us create um, destinations around some of these hubs and, and emphasize them. So um, transit is a really good way to sort of help flesh out the city, I've always found. Um, it can create a lot of potential for inspiration when you uh, approach it um, the right way. And again, just moving those stops closer now to this hub that's forming here, sort of at Factory Street at College Square. Um, and just going to throw that down and the reason for that is so this bus line can come up here now I'm just going to create a simple little turnaround that's all that is and we'll throw a pickup spot um, I want to be thoughtful about this so go ahead and drop that right there. And that right there. We're here. Yep, right there. Great. There's one more set of stops right there. And then, I mean, it only makes sense to try to bring Park Street down here again as well. And this is the nice thing about these little turnarounds is you can just do that. Um, or that. And we want that drop off spot to be right there because ultimately that's really to service the Park Street line. And it looks like that stop up there is what's creating this effect here. Um, okay, so we're back here at the train station. 
Um, it has again been some time. I've been doing some detailing. I've cut to later in the shoot here because uh, we want to take a look at how things are progressing. So obviously we want to check our traffic. We can see this is a little red. There's not a backup there, but it does mean it's a high traffic area. So we're going to do a little vanilla traffic fixing here uh, with our asymmetrical roads. And that'll just create a dedicated right turn lane right there, uh, which is handy. Um, we can look for some other spots where we might want to do this as well. So here's Groven Valley. Uh, again, a really strong candidate for uh, uh, redevelopment with some different traffic patterns. Um, I think that's a corridor I want to focus on more eventually. Um, again, right here, we'll create uh, a couple of different outlets there. And it looks like, yes, there will be a dedicated right-hand turn lane now. Um, so that's good. Obviously, it goes green right away, um, uh, but it'll take time for the traffic to, to rebuild. Re it'll show itself again. Um, obviously, some six-point intersections. I think we're just going to naturally see a lot of traffic. Uh, for now, we can throw that down there because that'll give us a taste of how a two-lane one-way works, even though it's not a two-lane one-way. Um, I think the tricky part of that is just going to be figuring out how to, how to do a turnaround down at this end. Um, but I'm sure there is a way. So we'll put that right there too. As you can see, it would be great to have a passing lane for this bus stop because as I was afraid, there are quite a few buses lining up there now. Um, and we'll go ahead and do that too. So buses coming out the other way. Uh, also have plenty of room and I love the little um, marking that creates in the middle there actually um, it's very funny that the bus uh, will still make that guy wait so a lot to think about on Valley View and Grove I think Actually, I like this because we create that crossway there. Um, bus stop actually pulls off to the side a little bit and we add some more trees into this area by the train station and the farmer's market. So we'll go with that for now. And obviously some bus backup, but it's not really um, causing a problem. And that's the thing is like this isn't ideal but these sorts of inefficiencies happen all the time in cities so i'm not really worried about it not being super realistic because ultimately uh it is very realistic and that is not realistic that is a california palm growing through a walkway so we'll have to go with something kind of short there and that'll work just fine some sugar maples trying to mix in a lot of different trees here you can see um, you'll see some of the detailing I've done here in a little bit uh, but again creating like a crosswalk right there I really like that spot for that because the the some of the park pedestrian paths feed out right there it's a good spot to get across um, and then we can go ahead and add those add some trees in here as well um, and this creates more tree cover in the sort of what's actually the front of the train station here which I really like um, not enough to keep the big trees in though, clearly. So I'm pretty excited about where this is all at now. Um, we'll just pull back into traffic view again. Again, this is just valley view and grove. I think it needs, uh, more substantial changes than what I do in this video. But overall, our percentage is, looks like... Um, not bad. I mean, we're way up in the green. Obviously a couple of spot, hot spots here and there. Here's another good candidate spot, I think, for some asymmetrical roads. Um, we want to flip that around because we want the double lanes feeding out here. And that's looking really nice. We can go ahead and do this on the other side as well. Of course, we want to change that direction. 
that's creating a dedicated right hand turn lane on both sides which i think would probably serve as both of the right turns that are possible there um, here's another spot where it's a little little heavy you can see we're obviously flipping back and forth and that'll create a dedicated right hand turn lane not the most realistic honestly in that situation i would much rather see a dedicated left hand turn lane because left turns trying to come across big traffic there unless there's a light um could would be would be the scariest part of an intersection like that left turns always are so um you know i wish we had some more traffic management options and so you can see the traffic colors coming back in in some of these spots again um that's another spot that, again, I think turning Grove and Valley into uh, uh, basically a separated connector with, with uh, two lane one ways headed in either direction is going to be the key. It's just going to be figuring out how not to create a traffic problem down at this end somehow. Um, Park Street is probably still going to need to connect all the way across, so our turnaround may have to be somewhere else. So that brings us back to our train station, where it's showing like 150 passengers a week. Um, I do want to come through here. One thing we want to do is actually give this train station a name. So we're going to call it Market Station. Um, I think that's a nice, simple, descriptive name. You can see it's already old Market Station here. We're just going to call it Market Station. Um, so I. I'm really happy with how this is shaped up. Um, and then let's go ahead. It's been some more time. I've been doing some more detailing in between this bit and the last bit. So we went ahead and check our transit numbers again. You know, we're north of 2,000 regular passengers a week. You can see our dusty road line here, still doing pretty well. Decent pickup there. A few folks here. Um, really not the kind of traffic you'd like to see from that stop if it's going to be out here creating all these traffic pattern issues. Um, let's check on Valley View. Valley View is cooking. We actually have cleared those issues we had earlier with stops being very backed up. Um, so again, just like waiting for that to take effect. And now our buses are fairly well balanced there. Um, Roslyn Street. Not doing much, tiny little guy. Uh, Eureka, a um, lot of low buses there, so we'll go ahead and turn that down a touch. Uh, Dusty Road, we've got some significant pickup at a couple of stops here. Um, go ahead and bump that up a little bit. Bay Street and Beach Street. Park Street has one stop that is completely overwhelmed. So this is a really good candidate to switch to a bendy bus, which should have increased capacity. And Factory Street also absolutely overwhelmed here again. Like these barely go anywhere, but they are servicing vast areas. So we're seeing that there's already a lot of transit demand out here. Roslyn Street is doing fine. Eureka Boulevard. Looks okay. Can bump that down even a little more because we could back some of these bus lines down a little bit and really not actually increase the budget at all when we're adding buses to other lines. Um, if you think you take two away from one and throw them on something else, you're still using the same amount of buses in the game overall. Um, so just doing quick spot checks here on all these lines one final time. And there we can see the big bendy bus, which has a much higher capacity, yes. That's really cool. Looks like 70. Um, so that's a huge, huge change to the game for sure. We can take that way down as a matter of fact. Um, Now the bendy bus is not going to make sense in every situation, especially if you're playing for realism. Um, so there's a lot of turns those buses just can't make in real life. Uh, that doesn't stop any of the buses in this game, of course. Um, 
but it's something to be cognizant of if you don't want to be enjoying a beautiful view of your city and have a bendy bus clip through itself to make a turn that you didn't realize was even on its route. Um, just some food for thought. So this is a stop that has Eureka feeding into uh, this. And of course, switching a line to Bendy Bus, as you can see here, makes a big difference in the short term because it's gonna recall every bus that's on that line and send out a whole new brigade. Um, so be careful with that, I guess. Because uh, it's gonna take time for the new buses to show up. As we discussed earlier, um, and given that this is a relatively new mechanic, it's worth making a special note of here. So here our first Bendy bus is coming into this factory street stop. That's great news. It's going to make a big pickup here. And we're going to clear that stop in a couple of bus loads here now. Um, whereas in uh, with the with the regular buses that would have taken much longer to clear the bendy buses are just going to decimate that that's really cool uh, they really have a similar capacity to the trams um, so we can really exploit that um, because really we'll be able to see how a tram line would function without having to actually install tram tracks um, and of course if you're playing for a really u.s sense of realism uh, you won't have any trams. There'll just be buses, if you're lucky. <laughs> um, so, we can see this is coming to a stop here. Uh, made a big drop off. Look at that. Wow. Here at the end of this line, and now it's going to head right back. So, we can be pretty happy with that. Um, of course, we want to check in around the train station here again. So middle is looking pretty good. Um, I'm going to look at the other buses here. I hope I'm not actually going to use one. Oh, there's a super bendy bus too, huh? Interesting, interesting. So just looking around here. I already looked at Roslyn Street, but... This is really the name of the game with transit, is you're just going to have to make checks. Um, I'll show you in a little bit some of the detailing I did to kill time in between some of these. You can see it's already been at least in one more academic year. It might have been two. Who knows what got cut out in the edits. But uh, all this just to say, like, all of this transit work, you know, it's just good to regularly check in. It's easy to set it and forget it, I think, sometimes with transit lines. Um, but really this game can become a transit planning simulator quite easily if you sort of embrace that aspect of it and get into the fact that there is so much to customize and tinker with in your transit systems. Um, I think it's really cool um, and I love building you know, uh, uh, cities that the transit networks are oriented around these specific points of interest. So the train station being our first major one here. Um, and wow, look at the demand on the Park Street line. Um, so that's something I'm hoping to address with some more transit upgrades in the future is how do we uh, 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 create some some better avenues for, for transit traffic? Um, in the key directions in the city and I think Metro is going to be the way that I approach that at the beginning so hopefully it will be an episode about that very soon last thing I want to check in on here around the train station is just noise we checked our traffic let's check our noise see how it looks obviously the train station is pretty loud but there's enough trees around here that it's really not that bad I don't think um, which is really good news. So I'm going to run one final check on some bus lines here. Uh, but overall, I'm really happy with the improvements we made today. Um, you know, I think in a later video, I might come through and look at some of these traffic patterns again. It's actually been quite a while since I recorded this. I've just been really backed up because this turned into such a complicated one to edit. Um, because I wanted to really cut through to the meat of all the transit stuff here in, in the sort of first part, maybe first half of the video. And then what's gonna follow here is a lot of the detailing I did in between. 
So if you like that part, stick around. Okay, so I'm going to start with a little detailing here downtown area up near City Hall. We're also going to run this all in double time because it's just not that exciting watching me pick out different types of trees to try and create the most realistic looking, um, you know, whatever uh, through here. Um, so I'm just trying to mix in a lot of different trees, create a natural barrier with the stables here. Also obviously want some forested area between these apartments and the big industrial area down here. Uh, try to make this feel a little more secluded from that. And of course, because it is Roslyn, we want to mix in some nice tropical trees as well. So then coming over here, um, you can use these vanilla trees uh, from the base game. Right in the corners there, I like that spot for them because it's already sandy, so it's not going to throw off the, the look of the grass too much. You're not going to lose too much grass that way. So then I'm coming to this square right here. I'm just gonna throw down some trees really quick, make this feel like it's not just a complete non-area. Uh, it's gonna give me an interesting way to spawn a tree in right there that I really like. And we'll add some of the big yew trees right there. And then we'll look for some of these content creator pack trees to add around here, because they're not gonna create the dirt circles underneath. So, you know, debatable about what's most realistic there, to be honest with you. Of course, when I had trash cans there, you can see it can be very frustrating to add props to some of the more persnickety parts of the build. But you'd expect trash cans all over a place like this, otherwise trash is going to end up everywhere. You can also just check in on the, the actual um, park that we've created here. Maybe look for a chance to add in some uh, patios or... I like these uh, from the, the lookout points, technically, from the nature preserve, but you can use them in a build like this all the same. Um, I really, I don't mind them, especially like next to a restaurant or something. I think that's an interesting look. Of course, going to delete those uh, uh, electric car charging lots. Ultimately, I think just get rid of everything right here and put in some more trees. Why not, right? can't get the farmer's market look that I want, so just go ahead and make it forested. So there's a couple of spots in here. I'm not sure how realistic this would be to be have trees coming up through the tracks like this, but I think it would be a really unique and interesting feature. It's not something I can think of seeing in a lot of different places in the middle of a sort of elevated train yard like this. So. I think it could be a really unique and interesting feature for Roslyn. And there we're getting some of the dirt that we like to see, so we'll go ahead and allow that to stay here. and We can even expand it a little bit. Um, just create a little bit of that. And then why not throw in a big bush or something back here just to create, complete that look. And of course we want some California palms through here. Really, if there's one tree that defines Roslyn, it might be this one. So we'll just go ahead and create a couple of couple of little thickets of these. They tend to grow really well like that. And of course, it won't be the only palm tree we'll have. I'm going to mix in a lot of different trees because, you know, with the fact that a tree in this game is just going to give you some different sizes of the exact same asset, and you don't have any vanilla spin ability. Um, to create a really complex looking area with it's not just obviously the same tree copy and pasted over again, you're you're better served by having a variety of trees. So we want to come down in here on the ground level. Um, this looks like a tourist, and that's really kind of who we're trying to bring in with this area, I think. So obviously we've got the famous Fairfield Farmers Market um, right here. Just tie your shoe before you head in. Uh, of course, this was. One of the first things in the Roslyn build I was really proud of. I think it might be episode 14 if you want to go back and look at it. Just look for the, the farmer's market builds. Um, you can tell a lot of care went into trying to craft this place. These are all the ploppable park life assets here. These flower beds, this whole plaza, the picnic tables. Um, and then being very painstaking with the, the other assets I wanted to use. Um, so of course you can come here, pick up the bus. Um, 
definitely see this is exactly what you don't want to see with bus traffic is it backing up to the intersection here so I miss those buses up pretty bad I can be honest about that it's been a while since I've recorded this look at that bus stop that's a total mess uh, this would have been a point in the video where I did go in earlier and make some changes here I think uh, again this footage is coming from in between some of the transit fixes we were doing earlier um, so it's great to come down to the bird's eye view when you're working on an area especially in transit fixes and this is a great way to like let the transit changes take effect um, so you can see now that bus stop's gone and it looks much better um, I'm gonna go ahead and start to just add in a ton of these uh, market stalls um, through here because this was really my vision for this from the get-go was that I wanted this to feel like an extension of the market station um, and so I'm just gonna be thoughtful here in placing these around the props that come built into the um, the the paths through here so we have these beautiful brick paths um, with uh, some some light lamp posts and and trash cans and benches in front of them obviously you wouldn't have a market stall directly behind a bench you wouldn't want one directly next to a trash can um, even that one right there you can see I put it behind a lamp post that's gonna like diminish a little bit of a sense of realism when we're down at bird's eye view which obviously we're not spending a lot of time on and also all of this is under these train tracks and disappoint maybe most disappointing of all these park life assets i don't really think your your citizens can actually interact with them um which is a real bummer to be honest so here because we've got a couple benches on either side there we'll go ahead and create a little seating area why not right uh we can drop these tables in in a couple of different spots as you're grabbing different stuff why not turn this into a whole little seating area right here we can walk in between indoor and outdoor of the park station here grab a little spot Just looking for some of these corner spots where we can drop some of these tables in. Buy other benches and stuff where it makes sense, right under the tracks there. You know, I wish that these Park Life assets could actually generate interactions with the, the Sims, because that would really, I think, I mean, this might be overkill, who knows? Especially if there was no way to modify it. Um, and I'm sure there are mods that make them interactable on the PC version of the game, but of course I'm on the PS4 here, so please be nice to me. Um, we can go ahead and fill this spot in right here too, right? Um, look and see if there's anything over here where we missed a spot. Um, And the other thing is I really wish these came in multiple colors. I think I've said that before, but I think it's a real bummer that we only get the green. Um, if they came in like a tarp blue and a, a basic white, like some of the other tents on these here, um, even if we could just get that tent in the bottom right of the screen there from this uh, farmer's market asset as a, as a ploppable, imagine that. So just go ahead and drop these food trucks and trailers in here. It's a good spot for a tree, I believe, as well. Maybe a nice fat one. Yep. Like that. Go ahead and add a tree in there. Here's a good spot for some trees as well. Uh, you probably want a tree there if that was your pool in your backyard. You can see now that traffic is cleared up on this side. And then we're just gonna come through here and create um, a, a pedestrian network that's based around the ideal use for this little nonsense space. The idea here being that these intersections are what people are gonna be traveling between. So if we can create the shortest routes between them, um, we can also come through here and turn this into a really nice, just heavily uh, treed up area that's going to be a distinctive landmark, I think, for people. Call it the triangle, because it's a triangle of trees. 
And then of course, just adding a little detailing into these backyards here, try to create a little bit of separation from this very major hub of downtown activity. Um, just dropping more trees in around here. Trying to flesh this out a little bit. Not sure you'd see this did much development on this kind of block right here, but take it. And then just trying to see if I want to put some wild grass under here. Ultimately, I'm gonna go for it. Looks like it, I guess. Very persnickety. I do love this long grass asset. I wish there was a version of the game, and maybe you can get a mod for this on PC, I don't know, where you could actually just let the grass grow. Um, I think it's ridiculous that so much of the map is designed to look like mowed grass, uh, especially the unincorporated areas outside the city. Um, I understand there's a lot of physics demands on adding that many blades of grass into the game, uh, but a simple texture really is all you need. I do love how these look mixed into this long grass. I use that a lot up on the Eureka slopes. So we'll just go ahead and add a couple of these in here as well. And I'm pretty happy with how this little area looks here under the tracks right now. I think that added a lot of realism. I don't think this is an area that you would see high priority mowing, especially if these are all businesses fronted on the block here. So I also want to think about this spot right here. It can really do a lot for land value depending on how we use it. Um, and also this little thing that I built here to, to make this train platform feel a little more realistic. Obviously we want to go ahead and drop a fence through here if we can. And then what we can do is create a sort of impenetrable thicket here. The idea being that you obviously would not mow the sheer sides of this hill or those little patches at the top because it would be tough to get a mower up there even at all. So we'll go ahead and use a couple of these different like ground cover assets, the big bush, the big fronds, um, and then this long grass from the content creator pack to just create a sort of overgrown look here. It's just about puzzle piecing this together, trying to figure out how to get everything to look the way you want it to. Obviously the most exciting part of any build here. You can go ahead and throw a tree down there too. And I actually love how that side looks. We're gonna go ahead and match it over here. Not match exactly, obviously, but complement it with a similar idea. These are really the sort of forgotten spaces I think you see in a lot of layout, uh, real world design. Because uh, who the hell wants to mow all that? tree or two in here as well. Here we go. We'll go ahead and bring it down in here to the street view again. Um, or maybe the flying view. Why not, right? So coming off of our walkway here, got this train station is just a beautiful feature of downtown instantly recognizable landmark especially surrounded by the California Palms the Rosalind Market Station uh, the primary way into and out of the city right now other than traffic um, 
that's huge i think it's really going to add to the historic feel of roslyn overall uh, obviously this asset in particular does a lot for that with the brick build the giant glass on top it's a little weird of an asset i wish it had more of a grand entrance to it i also am like not super sold on the elevated train platforms i guess i think it makes sense with this asset but um i don't know maybe it makes more sense in a higher density downtown too um as opposed to right next to the farmer's market and the farm here um but they all do complement each other really well i think got a got a load of goods coming in here great view through the trees excellent camera work as always uh, but yes, here's our industrial train station as well, which we can see has got trains coming and going. Have to be careful with these, don't want to overload the tracks, but I think we're doing okay. Just that train station, I do love that. Um, you can kind of instantly tell the dual domes there, what you're looking at. And again, just like really this farmer's market from this farmer's market to worker square two of the early things we did in the build here you know we're building this huge transit hub now in between them making them both a destination sort of that older downtown area um, and now this which is really turned into a, a key sort of border of of what might really become the larger downtown area as the city continues to expand um I think this area now between the train station, uh, this is the sort of that borderline of the farmer's market, the train station and Worker Square, working down to Baymouth Beach, I think really has the potential to um, transform into a highly urbanized downtown. I'll go ahead and come through here. Not crazy about the fire risk, that looks out of control, but now we can see the the, the market station area here um, with a lot of these market stalls put into place. Obviously, like if there was liveliness here, if there was shopping happening and people manning the stalls, it would feel very different. But I do really love how this looks with the brick paths under this old ironwork of the train tracks. Um, you know, you can imagine haggling with somebody down here over a head of kale while the train roars overhead you gotta take a break uh maybe you know you grab a coffee and hit the gazebo here um take a little break and then uh yeah you know i think the other benefit this has is it really sells agriculture as such a key element of Roslyn's identity because this train station i think you know obviously this is not the way the functions in the game we have to put in a separate industrial train station but this really is a, a commercial station um it feels that way i think and even though we're going to see it used exclusively for passenger trains i think it's not easy to see how in an older version of roslyn um that kind of gets to the history we're looking for uh this could have really been where goods were getting shipped into and out of at one point as well um little disappointing that the train yards are sort of limited but you know this underneath part here really does feel more like a passenger station as well so at least there's that um yeah let's go ahead and see what it looks like from up here on the platform as well really like that you can see the statue from here um, as you're coming into this station you get off you immediately know you're in Roslyn because you see the worker square statue there whether you're coming home too that might be a really comforting site nice postcard view um, you can see from birds from the street view here all of the work I've done on detailing with the forestry really pays off um, This train station itself up here, this is really nice. This feels like it's been modernized in a way that's really cool. Um, and I think is the sweet spot I look for in a lot of my cities where you can sort of imagine how it was built and, and adapt so much of that to what's happening now. Um, so we'll go ahead and start at Worker Square here now. 
can find somebody we like. Sure. I think there's a medical clinic just up the street here. Maybe you're a healthcare worker on a break here. You're gonna come down to Worker Square. Just go for a walk, clear your head. Um, you can see this street here could use a little development along it, honestly. Um, then maybe, uh, maybe you want to go over to the farmer's market and grab something for lunch, right? Why not? It's the beauty of working in downtown is you can walk right over there and obviously not realistic to have a, a farmer's market that's open every day, but I think we can really emphasize agriculture here in a way that makes that feel okay. You know, it's a little bit idealized. It's, it's more of a throwback. And I think that's really what I imagine for Roslyn is that this market is such a centerpiece of this community that it has withstood a lot of the forces of modernization. Um, and I think that that's a really beautiful idea. Um, of course, for it to really have a truly historic feel, um, you know, the devil is in the details. Um, and so for this to feel like it was built, you know, over a hundred years ago, it has sort of seen its usage transform. We have to sort of see that in the area around here. Um, and so these walkways, they feel like they could have been added at any point between, uh, who knows, like the, the 50s and today. Um, the lampposts in particular are very 70s, obviously. Uh, but this is, this is just the elevated amusement park path that we've used to create an elevated walkway through here. Um, and even though this was built long before the train station as an elevated bike path that I've been upgraded to this, uh, it really, I think, helps to emphasize the centrality of this area to especially the older part of Roslyn. Um, of course, again, as I said, the devil's in the details, which is why I want to take a look at this plaza to the left here and figure out why it's not detailed at all. Um, wow, Factory Street. There go the trucks, though, huh? I mean, that's, that's what you want to see on Factory Street, right? Um, Anyway, but again, like right here, the big bite and the fake IHOP, you know, seeing some fast food come in around here speaks to the fact that this is a very in-demand commercial zone. Uh, even if those aren't, you know, if this is one of those situations where if this was a real city, you would see some before and after photo from this exact spot where it's these beautiful old brick buildings on the left and the right. And now all you've got is the beautiful brick building on the right here. Um, and that just comes down to styles and themes and stuff like that. And maybe there's room to explore uh, how to, to create more of an old world feel along Factory Street here eventually too, potentially with the European theme. Um, but again, obviously not happy with the lack of detailing right here. So thinking uh, actually this might be a nice spot for a fountain, not something I use very often. I think they're kind of hard to work in in a way that makes sense, but I really like this here. Um, we could throw some benches down to create like a little viewing area. You know, this is just part of my, an another part of sort of my fantasy of the game is that I really like to create a lot of public spaces that feel friendly and inviting. Um, not something you see a lot, especially these days in the U.S., uh, but, you know, something that I, I sometimes wish there was more of, um, for everybody's benefit. Yeah, this would be a classic throwback to the, the older days, maybe mid 20th century there. I love that grill. Um, and it'll have a couple of little tables right here. Why not? Not happy with the placement on that one. We'll bring it a little closer there. I think that looks pretty good. And I want to go ahead and bring this all the way onto the stones. I mean, this is just, you know, this is who I am, folks. It's got to be done and redone a hundred times before I'm happy with it. So uh, if you like that, I hope you'll stick around. 
Um, I know I've been a little inconsistent with my release schedule, but you know, life's strange sometimes, and things change. Um, I don't really want to get too personal about it, but uh, just to say that I appreciate you checking out the channel, watching my videos. If you're a fan of Rosalind, it means a lot. Um, you know, uh, always got to add the trash, because of course that's the name of the game for me. So, again, thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, I hope you learned something about transit systems in this video. If you're if you're still new to the game. If you're an expert, uh, let me know below what you think the train station here could still use in terms of transit. Um, you know, I think there's always so much to explore in this game, and the sort of infinite possibility of refining things is what keeps me coming back. Um, so even as we leave Roslyn, headed out of town on a train today, uh, you know, we can see that there's so much more to do. Um, and I'm going to keep chipping away at it. So I hope you'll keep coming back and tuning in. Check out the old videos if you haven't yet. Again, this is episode 26, so there's a lot to watch if you like what you saw. And thanks for bearing with me through my uh, challenges as a first time. This is my first series, so, you know, take it or leave it. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Ah... <sighs>